to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered in the four corners of the earth and to the Gentiles called by the name of Abbe Yehua. Shabbat Shalom, much love, much prosperity. I tell you family for you are the reason of our time like truth because the time is simply near. Just as we see the days goes by and so draw nigh the coming of Yahushua HaMashiach. Just as the Malak of Yehuah said unto Yehuah, the Revelator, sealed not the prophecies of this book, for the time is near. Exactly what we are doing here, family. Decoding end times, prophecies, signs, dreams, in preparing people, body, house, for the returning of King Yahushua HaMashiach, to whom due eternally all glory, worship, honor, wealth, power, riches, horrible shanda, yababa. Neriko shantaya babo seke bababa to ori mahan talabo seke to the glory of his magnificent father Yahuwah the Almighty and to the Ruach HaKodesh, the very blessed one, the very DNA of Abe Yahuwah, the very pure energy eternal. Ori bo shantaya babo Yahuwah, you have been worshipped in the temple of your Isha and you knew. He must Santa Labo Sekeba that your Isha always love you eternal 
because you are my ish. Ori mahan talavo sekeya. now you simply had it like I do and I hope everyone do you know that is the glory and the blessing of the shofar or trumpet that sounds or trumpet precedes every single movement of a that is why it's good to use the voice of trumpet regardless of what is going on around you you don't struggle you see sound as shofar. That is the voice of Abbe Yehuwa using the voice of trumpet. You need not to struggle. Absolutely. For now. No. Regardless, you see sound the trumpet. Regardless what the devil is saying, is to use his sound the shofar. Because it is the powerful movement of Abbe Yehuwa. It is, in fact, the voice of Abbe Yehuwa. That which is said in Shemo, Exodus 34, verses 10. That's what we are responding to your hearing. The glory reserved over there, the world has never knew no, nothing about. That is what we are responding to your hearing. What you see already, that is in faith. But you hope for what you don't see. Their faith works. That is the glory of faith. So that is what we are responding over you here to you. That which Abayawa has already said, predicted, is about to come. And what, what was the glory over there? You know, in those days, our forefather, see Yahushua HaMashiach, you know, in his childhood, like a baby, mm -hmm. like a man that a filthy man can lay their hands on. Okay? But this time, we are going to see the lion of the tribe of Yehuda. He is coming as a full grown up man. He ascended up being a man. He's coming right back again being a man. And. Have you ever seen anyone destined in the ways of rolling lion? No. Said so he's going to rule the whole world with an iron scepter. Okay? Because you're not going to take that nonsense. And you're yeah, not going to lay your filthy hands on me anymore. Mm -mm. Rather, he's going to pass judgment upon every worker of iniquity. Do you want to face his wrath? Because the royal law makes it so clear that he's going to trade the wrath of his father. Do you want him to trade that wrath on you? Or rather you make peace with him. Because that is what his coming is all about. He's going to favor some. He's going to do some disaster to the cup of some. So if you don't want a disaster, what disaster is he going to do? And what cup is he going to, is he going to run that disaster onto? That should be the people that break the royal law. The people that does not take his word into consideration. The people that misuse his grace for granted. The people that take his grace now as a license for sin. Those are the people he's going to trade the wrath of his father upon. But whereby you make peace with him, that is how you wash your wedding garment. That is how you prepare for your bridegroom that is on his almost year. That is how you put your house in order. That is how you watch and pray because you don't take no garbage. Okay, you don't run after no lovers. All right. At least I forget this. The Ruach HaKodesh has already said this to you. I mean, like in that have here, here, what he himself has already said unto you almost a thousand years now. Okay? And what was he saying? Let him that have here. Why did he say? So do you have a year? Of course, look at it. Look at it. Every one single, every single one simply have an year to hear. So what year is he talking about? He is speaking about the spiritual ears. Only the spiritual circumcised ear hear the voice of Yehovah. And what is the voice of Yehovah? It is the royal law. Okay? Now, the uncircumcised a spiritual ear is going to be hearing the voice of Sempet. And how did that work? Or how did it go? I have abolished the law. You, know, you see, when this Sempet, you know, deceived, you know, found his way in a very crooked way into the first woman's life, she heard her vo his voice, and what did she do? She go for that voice, and what was that voice? What Yehovah said unto you is, isn't true at all. 
Therefore, this is what Abbey Yawai say. He now rationalizes it, he twisted it in her hand. And she not go. Ah, she not say that it's very good enough to be a god of yourself. Hmm. She go for it. Exactly what we are seeing today. Third part of humanity. They are hearing that same voice, that same voice, Sapeta voice, right in Genesis 3. They are hearing it again today. Third part of humanity. So what was the voice? I have abolished the royal law. It doesn't count anymore. To my pleasant city, Christian, over 3 billion by birth. Let's say so Jesus nailed the law to the cross. And Islam, to my amazement, also said, Allah said the royal law is corrupt. In other words, he abolished it. That was why he now gave the Quran. So exactly, that is the voice third part of humanity is here today in our generation but the saddest part of it that's why they are hearing the voice of Abba Yehovah you can't hear that voice that voice of righteousness is all cleanliness it's all clean I cannot contradict his word way by he said until heaven and earth pass away don't even think so I've come to abolish the royal law that is the criteria that is the stipulation until the first heaven and the first earth is no more that is all you go to Revelation 20 where you say, I saw, you say for the first ever and the first ever is no more. And I saw the new one. So that is where the royal law will be done away with. Not whereby you see, see the first ever, you see, see the first F. You just said he has abolished it. You see, that is the voice of, that is dragonic. And that is the voice of serpent. They are hearing again. I right now, regardless how I talk. I'm doing this message with a very heavy heart. That was struck again. Serpent has struck again. But our glory be unto Abbe Yehua, the only boy among six he wanted to kill by accident. But glory be unto Abbe Yehua, he may not survive. Right away, one that three of them include involved in this accident. Right away, one go for it. The other one that is still in coma. You know, knowing what we don't know what is going to happen to to that one, but my brother came out alive, being all his body be broken, stitching everywhere. The only king among the queens, but glory be unto Abbe Yehua, that makes it, you know, uh, unfruitful unto the serpent. It's all took place on Monday. Yes, that is the second day of the week. The third day of the week might also took place. You know, that is how devil, serpent, it declare a spiritual war. But that war is going on his own head in several because we'll get there. We're almost there. You know, where deliverance is near. Just like uh, Exodus, I think Shimo chapter 6, where deliverance is closed like this, serpent tightening up, you know, his wickedness. He will multiply his wickedness. He will multiply his arrows. He will mu mu multiply his hatred upon the people of the book. Because Samuel, our deliverance, we are just at the gate, you know, about to, you know, take off. <laughs> well, it's waging war. He attacked me so severely that I don't even know where I am. You know, after he did that on my brother, second day of the week. Then I guess to my turn. Not to just, you know, cause me to just sleep and not wake up. But glory be unto Abbe Yehovah. That I always know how to rescue, you know his people from the land of danger or from the land of the death yes when deliverance is come now like this serpent you know get mad it's really really mad at me it's really really mad at my family <laughs> but we are marching forward we are prevailing least i forget this the science of the last they say something very deep over here to you and me you can't obviously believe that watchmen yahoo and Bora did not pay me to do the intro for White It Out 4 to deceive the masses. The true Israelites are the so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics and Native Americans scattered throughout the earth. The Judah team has an agenda to make all the tribes Hamite. Matthew 24, 4 says, To take heed that no man deceive you. Hey guys, the gig is up. I'm not the real Jesus. As a matter of fact, the fellow's name he had a Hebrew name. There wasn't a letter J until a few hundred years ago. <laughs> With that being said, I have fooled the whole world into the biggest sham of all time. The name and identity of the real fellow.
drama has been taken over by me. <laughs> there are thousands of paintings of Jesus, and they don't even come close. Jesus was the creation of the Roman Catholic Church, which served to replace the real fella who probably looked more like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> but who cares? The truth doesn't matter. As long as you pay your tithes. <laughs> gotcha. All right, love. Prior to this, I got a precept. Yeah, here I am, Revelation 12 now. I read, ah, oh, my father. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Manus Islam, the whole world. Manus the Christendom, the whole world. Manus Igbo people, the whole world. Manus Synagogue and Satan, the whole world. Can I, should I take it again? I will be kind enough to do that. Mm -hmm. Because I said the mother strike. The mother be your working multiply. You are playing with fire, serpents. I take it again. And the great dragon was cast out. It is great, okay? Not small dragon. It's not a small boy. It's great. And the great dragon. This is the... This is the uh, uh, Yohukala, the one you call Joseph Vision of the Great Dragon. Be revealed unto him by Yahushua HaMashiach. You see? He said the Great Dragon is not small, okay? Put your house in order. This deity is wicked. It's not small. And the Great Dragon was cast at that old serpent. Where, we are, where is his old origin? Genesis 3. That old serpent. Called the devil and Satan. Yes, they are together in one tree, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. No, minus Christ, the whole world. Tibi Joshua Uka, the whole world. Benehi Uka, Tibi Jes, Joanita, and all these bastard people that said Jesus, Jesus made them gay, Jesus made them homosexuality. The whole world. Get life. Should I take it again? He was cast out into the earth. It's right here with you, eh? Don't ever take it somewhere. It's the grand pop. I'm going to show you where, where he lives. His paradise is here on earth. And his angels were cast out with it. Did you he, did he, did he hear him say he's demon? No, he's angels. They masquerade. They are demons now, but they are masquerade as an angel of light. Do you want to know how does that work look to the Christian though? They are the demons that masquerade as an angel of light to deceive, to help this wicked dragon in deceiving the whole world. Do you have to see their miracle? A snake, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, all their stupidity, you need to see all their stupidity, all their idiotic is well pronounced. We are the dragon, but the final one, the very last DVD to play, or the very last video of a playlist lies started from the old genesis 3. one more to go christianity is second to the last and islam is the last video to be do you know to be played for the whole world you see so right now let me take you there to the house of the grand pope okay it's right here on earth let me show you where he lives i knew his address you know his very address i have it come over Yeremiah three three three. 3 3 Okay now, come over. Just come along with me, baby. I'm going to show you where this very grandpa lives. All right now, here we are in the kingdom of the grandpa. When I'm saying grandpa, I'm not saying Allah is your father or neither Allah is my father. Not at all. But a father of all liars. A father of all twisters. So if you are a liar, twisted the royal law, 100%, in fact, 1 trillion percent, Allah is your grandpa. Started his wickedness, all right, from Genesis 3. All right now, not too much talk today. I want to focus on what I'm supposed to do today. Here is a folded snake, and here is how Allah is being written in Arabic. Okay, this, get the beheaded sword. And this is Allah's head, always ready to bite people. Okay. And this is a for this snake. Eh, Zali, this is how Allah is being written in Arabic. So the characteristics of the great dragon that deceiveth the whole world isn't only found in the name of Allah, but also in his mouth. mouth. 
All right now, let's see from the prayer of Goliath. Here I am, Korah 3, or Sora 3, 54. And they, the unbelievers, plant to deceive, and Allah plant to deceive the unbelievers. And Allah is the best of all deceivers. Did you get that? Where unbeliever is planning to deceive, Allah is also planning to deceive them. How can a mighty one, you call yourself a mighty guy, you know, you, you not bring yourself to that level of a human that, you know, that is not perfect. That was why I said, you see Revelation 12, 9, where I just read, what did they call him? Angels. It said, fell down here on earth with his angels. It never said with his demon. Who are his angels? Like I said, it is the Christian. Okay. You can't be angel. Buy. You can't be angel. You just carry the money of the congregation and went to go and buy four private jets. No, angel don't do that. You can't be angel even buy private jet in the first place. What are you going to do with it? You can't be angel buy filling station for your wife. We are bad people in the ministry. You know, it's dying of starvation. That is not angel. To be angel, go to Act of Apostle chapter 4, take it from 30. Two also way down to 37. Also out of Apostle chapter 6. Then you're gonna see what angel does. They sold their houses, lands, property to take care of the poor. Those are angels. Those are angels, okay? But Christians that they are the one that masquerade themselves as an angel of light. They are demons. You can't be angel, excuse me, buying for private. No, that is demon that masquerade himself with the royal law. Now I read on the second mouth, mouth from Allah. Korah saw herself 99. Are they then saved from Allah's deception? Allah is questioning you. Do you think you are saved before me? I have a lie. I know how to deceive. No one feels safe from Allah's deception. No one. Except this is where I hate. I hate this place. Mm -mm. It's not added to. Except those that shall perish. Does this make sense? If you want to be saved. You don't believe Allah deception. And again, you will be said that it's going to perish. No. In a nutshell, what Allah is saying over here, the only people that is going to free from Allah is eh? The only people I won't be able to deceive, those are they are going to be the people that does not believe Quran. They will be the people that does not believe in me. That is it. That is what Allah is saying. You you, you don't want to be dece you know, deceived. And you rather don't believe Quran. That is what Allah is saying. If you believe Quran, then you are gone. I tell the third mouth. From Allah. Quran Surah 8, verses 30. And remember when the unbelievers plant deception against you, O Muhammad, to imprison you, to kill you, or to expel you, they plot deception, but Allah also plot deception. And Allah is the best of all deceivers. Did you get that? Yes, I'm not gonna comment too much, or rather, I'm not gonna go too much deep into this because in the part two of this message, we have so much to do with Allah. So let me take it very simple today. How he deceived the whole world. I'm gonna say that in clip two. So let me hang it up today in this manner because I have so much again to talk about this mystery of sex. All right now. Yeah, well, I again. If you are a topology, you know, that can keep good memory. By now, you should have, you know, be answering these questions for yourself or in your heart. What do we all see from the written name of Allah in Arabic? It's a snake. Yeah, it's a true snake, a food snake. Did you see? What is the difference? <laughs> yes, it's a cost one. It's coming to cost the whole world. So this is a snake, okay, that is going to work with the whole world. This is Sharia law. This is Allah you are seeing over here. This is Sharia law that is going to pour that garbage upon the whole world why am i doing this allah is a garbage jesus is a garbage i don't want them to dump themselves on me mm -mm. so that's why i'm doing this so right now this is the garbage that is coming to dump himself in the whole world if not then you, you get ready to you know to be stunted death or set up list or you know behead you know, so that is the uh, punishment of the one that rebelled against allah not too much to be said today you see the pop already, the grand pop of all liars already become a say, I make it so clear, John 844. You say you are a you are you are of your father the devil, okay? He has so many children. Then he says a liar and the father of all liars, okay? When you are a liar, you don't go by the royal law status and commandment. Therefore, Allah is your grand pop, okay? Eternal, okay? It could be eternal, it could also be temporary. That is why you come out from his deception. 
that is going to be you know temporary so this is how what did Allah means again right in the Yahudith language the Roy, that is the holy language for now it's being called Hebrew like as you can see it simply makes cause that is why I keep asking people do you think that is going to be a simple thing first time for Abbe Yehuwah to release curses from his mouth you don't think that is going to be unique you don't think that is going to be a sign of course it's going to be a sign on earth all right so that cause we see it already on the head of one deity called himself Allah the greatest of all not the best of all deceiver it is his name is simply cause as in the concept right in well Genesis 3 the old serpent it got cause so that causes is a sign I will see that sign already on the head of Allah you know not just to found it in his name also in his bragging you know that this is who he is you know Allah is a cause it means simply means cause eternal and it's gonna cause everyone here on earth you know in the four corner of the earth he said it, it costs every man both free and bad so this is cause it's not gonna be released upon you know the slave only no it's also both great and small who are the great it costs heaven because I be you were serious pigs you know you just pray to be a part of that is gonna make heaven you're gonna see the first thoughts of Abba Yehua on earth how he once garnished his earth go to Revelation 21 and read it you're gonna find it that is how he first of all makes the first earth look at what we are seeing today do you see anything of that glory here on earth today no Serpent turned that glory upside down. So this is how it costs Abbe Yehuwa. It costs everyone. It costs everyone. Okay. It's the cursing. The final cost will be that is the last DVD or video to be played, you know, in this played live playlist, you know, right from Genesis 3. One month ago, we already watching, you know, the second to the last of video, which is the Christian door. The very last of video it is the Islam. That one is the one to play it, you know, last. Then after that, judgment will be set upon Allah and all his children. Christ said that they are also his children, okay? Never get it twisted. They are also his children. So we're going to see that more in part two of this segment. I want to take it very simple right now. Here I am, Matthew 24, 24. For they shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders in us so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. We are out every Shabbat, and so I'm healed in Yehoshua's mighty name, because he came for this reason. So for this reason, the son of mine, you know, they send a year on earth, you know, to set the captive free, to destroy the ways of darkness. This is the reason why he came. I am healed, okay? But I'm saying all this unto the glory or in thanksgiving unto Abiyah. Why should I even be bringing out my personal problem here in my ministry? But thanks be unto Abiyah because I knew it was an attack heavily. Seriously. One died right away. Or the other one is still in coma. Only one survived. Okay. That should be glory. That should be thanksgiving unto Abiyah who spared my own side. Okay. Because the one that died now, the family, they are in great pains, of course. Even my brother, all, all over his body is being broken into pieces. Look at me, that also stand to hell. I wanted to just pass out, pass out. Serious attack that I can't even raise my head. As I'm talking now, water is flowing out of my nose and my mouth. I've never seen a thing like this. But I bet you want to make it so clear unto me that it's, gonna, it's a door that is about to be opened. So that is why this serpent is so rough. You know, you want to put sorrow. No, the blessing of Abba, you want to make us, you know, rich and add no sorrow okay so it is of eternal glory so for some you know so demon they see what we, we don't see he have already seen the greatness of that you know glory so that's why he wanted to you know rob me of it but it is a lie he is a liar i'm alive my brother is alive we are coming out now with powerful thanksgiving unto abbe who did it for us with this being said mishmeka and people here we are in the heavenly cut room of Abbe Yehua with this life resurrected message, you know, titled for you and me right in the presence of Abbe Yehua from the very mouth of Abbe Yehua, titled now for you and me, the mysteries of sex. <laughs> it's the heavy, heavy. I've been doing all kinds of, you know, mysteries. I've never received an attack like this. 
Lawyers be fighting me. Sometimes I say it, sometimes I keep it. But this way, now we're going to touch my brother. The only king in among queens. But he has failed. Mm. He has failed because he said this generation shall not pass away. We are the generation to see the returning of our great king, Yahushu Hamashiach. We are going to see him here on earth. We're going to die with him. We're going to go everywhere with him. That is what the royal law said. All right now. So with this wonderful message, life giving, life resurrecting, it makes healing. Message titled for you amid the mystery of sex. It is let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Part one. I worked it out already. It's going to be having one and two. So next Shabbat is going to be the part two. Okay, so I'm doing the part one right now. We start already. So this is the mystery of it. The mystery of sex. <laughs> Oh ho ho ho, Sempet. Shame on to you. I'll keep going about the message of my father. You cannot struck me. Nay, you can't. Mm, great that you see that is in me. And great that is in you, Sempet. You know, the crooked Sempet, the cast one, the Allah, the very grandpa of all liars. <laughs> I bless Abbey Hua for uh, all and in all. So we should give him times in every situation we are going through. This is his will concerning our lives. Sir. I bless his name. All right, now here I am, Deborah. Let us first of all feast with our Yahushua HaMashiach, with our Donai, the eternal king. Okay, have you, you know, a life giving word for you and me, Deborah 32 1 to 4. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. I sh my my dietary shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of Yehovah, ascribe your greatness unto our Elohim. He is the rock. Yes, I will publish the name of Abba Yehovah, as my king does did. So, so do I. He said, I come in my father's name, John 5, 43. And likewise, what I'm doing over here, when you call Yehovah, Yehovah, Yid, He, Wah, He, I am that I am. This is how we publish his name, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, three, now, because I will publish the name of Yehovah, ascribe your greatness unto our Elohim. Now that we are publishing his name, therefore you, you are going to be ascribing, that is your job, you know, to ascribe, you know, greatness unto our Elohim. He is the rock, oh yes, his work is perfect, that's it. For all his ways are judgment, that is correct. A Elohim of truth, you can bear witness of that. And without iniquity again, you can bear him witness that is holy. Uh -huh. Just and right is eternal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless you. I baruch your mighty name, Abbe Yehovah. For you are awesome and you are powerful. Thank you once again for the rescuer. You are our rescuer. Mm -hmm. You always be with us. You say you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for your powerful movement. For you are our eternal rescuer. Hallelujah. So yet another presentation to go. Quickly, let us look into what is the royal law for. How does it play it out in our lives? Uh -huh, here I am. Uh, point one. Uh, it functions as a sacred marriage covenant between Yahuwah and his people Yisrael. Point two. It outlines how the marriage would function, its stipulation, and what makes it a happy and a fruitful marriage point three it preset to describe how the marriage would function point four its word pictures tells what marriage life would be like point five its judgment describe how each of the par uh, party would relate to each other point six for either party to violate this agreement violate the marriage itself oh excuse me point six now yeah now point seven for the groom promise never to violate it because the groom is Abbe Yehuwa himself. He has never ever broken his way, don't have the appetite to do that. Okay, he said they will fight against us, but they will not prevail against us. So that is his word that stands short eternal. Regardless what is going to happen, the word of Abbe Yehuwa, you know, conquer it all. So this is what you don't have the appetite to break his word, you don't have the appetite to deny his word. This is the guarantee we you and me have that heaven is our home. Why? Because of him that is eternally faithful. 
is not a man that should lie. Neither is son of man that need no repentance. Whatever he said, it is eternal. Uh -huh. Not like this mad Jesus, okay, and mad Allah. Mm -mm. That says Shabbat is perpetual. No, no, no more perpetual. Allah is keeping freak day, friars day. Christ said is keeping Sunday songers. See how stupid they are. They are idiotic, next not to be tolerated, okay. You see, see the first heaven, you see, see the first earth. That is the criteria of I am there with the royal law. We see, see it. You still come to me with that madness. What would be the use of it? What happened to Shabbat? Is Shabbat a burden for you to keep? Are you not keeping Sunday, Sundays? Islam, are you not keeping Frig Day? Then why doing that? Okay? Why doing that? Is that is Shabbat a burden for you to keep? No, you have your own day. Anyway, like I said, I don't have no much time, you know, for this. Let me go for my message today because in part two, we have so much to discuss about this Allah and this, you know, sex ability. <laughs> that will be done in part two because that is the perversion of sex. Sex is a holy food from above. But the perversion of it, we're, we're going to see that next Shabbat. Okay. All right, now, finally, finally, family, one more presentation to go. After this, we get that. And run the race and say the mystery of this word. S E X. <laughs> it's fully loaded as usual. So now, last presentation to go. I bet you want review story, Dim. A man I saw in my vision was just downloading all these mysteries, you know, to pervert it. Not to please, I bet you were, but rather to pervert it. Okay, so I bet you want to ask me to be doing this. So, this is how they are going to remove their filthy hangs away from my message. Hmm? You have already, you know, you know, de death. When the royal law, see how you turn that one into garbage. Mm? You want to also turn someone else for that, but your wife's digging out. No, that cannot be done. The, the royal law is enough for you, the Christian, okay? Now, it is like that of FBI warning. Right there, it is being called Yud He Wahe warning from above. If you listen to this message and you want to download it and resound it under the voice of you, and you now say, Jesus, give it to you. Ebola, we attend you, Yehovah's mighty name. Okay. Ebola is going to deal with you severely. Because we are destroying Jesus over here. If you, if you are a constant follower, you can bear me witness of that because the first Messiah. So you can not just come and take up my vision. But you were given to me. And not say, Jesus, give it unto you. Right? No, that is contract. You are contradicting this message. Jesus not give it to you. If you try it, Ebola. We are tell you in Yahuwah's mighty name. If you download this message, you want to resound it under the voice of you, you use it to place any deity at all, such as Allah, Jesus, and Christ, and all ghost fire. Uh -huh. The causes of Sapphires and Ananias, we attend you in Yahuwah's mighty name. If you download this message, you want to resound it under the voice of you, and you place any money making of any kind, obligation of any condition of any kind, such as. A sowing of seed, uh huh. The hottest place in the link of fire shall be your dwelling in Yahuwah's mighty name because you are perverting it. So, due to this perverting part, the scripture by uh, scripture references or uh, that validate it, Joshua 10, excuse me, Joshua 6 26, out of Apostle 5 1 to 11, out of Apostle 36 to 12. Revelation 22, 17 to 90 or 18 to 90, one of, yes, 18, 18 to 90. But if you download it and you want to resound it under the voice of you in pleasing Abbe Yehuah, in reaching out to the Lordship of Yazreel, also the chosen Gentile, double crown of glory is upon your head. Because of your faithfulness, your family is going to benefit from it. In you, this word will be fulfilled, this spoken word of Abbe Yehuah, that can never return empty unto him until he accomplished that which he has signed it for will be fulfilled in you. That saith, I will save one and save the entire household. In you it will be fulfilled. Why? Because you do what pleases Abba Yehovah's heart in Yehovah's mighty name. With this be said, let us guess that. A river of living waters is overflowing here, over here. A superb, a superb, duper vision. A deep center of reality vision. 
a serious climbing mountain vision, another level vision, a truth for life vision, a center head figure vision, hori motion tayababa, a predominant vision. <laughs> there is something about me, his glory, his heavenly ark of covenant. That is what Abbe Yehua is making known unto you through his ministries or through his mysteries. <laughs> so it is Aksa. Here we go, the mysteries of this holiest, noblest, you know, aromatic word called what? Sex. First of all, I want to pass this information or this great information to all of you. What the royal law says very clear about sex. It makes it so clear, okay? Say so that you won't be having no excuses. It's so clear. Like a broad daylight, it's very clear. Number one, sex is not for a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Very clear. Number two, sex is not meant for homosexuality. Very clear from the royal law. Number three, sex is not meant for bestiality. Okay. Number four, sex is not meant for lesbianism. Hmm? Number five, sex is not meant for door, sex door. That is the latest now. Not, it has been there for ages, but it's coming, you know, so wide in this last day. So in part two, we're going to discover what, what is all this for. These are the perversion of it. Number six, sex is not meant for pedophilias. Pedophiles. Hmm? It's not meant for them. They are kids. They are just children. A grown-up man can be, you know, having sexual desire upon children. That is wicked. It's not meant for them. Pedophiles. But Simon says it's not meant for necrophilians. We got this in Islam. We're going to explore this in part two. You know, having sex with the dead just as they are. Fatwa Seth and their Muhammad also do likewise. He did it. So we're going to unveil that in part 2. The perversion of it. It's not meant for uh, necroph uh, necrophilias. Necrophilia, yeah. But eternal spiritual food for husband and wife. That is what says it's been given unto. What is the title? The title simply goes like this. The mystery of sex. It is let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, that is our Donai's prayer. The very way he taught you, I mean, to be praying until it comes. Okay, there is a will in heaven going on. He said we should pray for that same will to go on, go on here on earth. And this is the title of this very word, holiest, noblest. It is the most powerful, wonderful, sweetest relationship. Amongst all relationships, Abba Yehua give unto man. It is gift. It is the eternal gift. Abba Yehua bestowed unto husband and wife. Not more. So all this one that I just listed, I'm going to find, see that in part, that is the perversion of it. That meant not to be so. So right now, with this being said, let's get started with the very first mystery, which is S. All right now, so we'll go for the very first letter. Of this one called sex. Mm -hmm. Now sex unfold. Sex unlocked. The very first letter. What did they call X? So what did they go for? Simply go for spiritual, sacred, a sweet, a smelly, savor service. Should I take it again? What did sex go for? The first letter. The reason why you what gave it. It is spiritual. Okay, sacred. Mm, a sweet, smelly, savor service. In other words, it is spiritual service. You don't know how it come about. You don't know what happened. You don't know how Abba Yewa put it together. Were you there when they built the, you know, the penis like that? Were you there when he, he built the vagina like that? Do you know how he come to pass? Were you there how he taught them you know, to be bang bang? Were you there? It is spiritual. He is that gave it. So right now I want to see what it is. It says sweet sex. The very first letter I go for spiritual, sacred, a sweet, a smelly, savor service. Unto Abbe Yehua, okay? 
so right now we want to first of all tie that so in order for you to get deep with the uh, things of the spiritual you must be a spiritual minded somebody okay even the pagans they are spiritual minded Islam they are spiritual minded Christians they are spiritual minded because do you know where evil is do you know where it's being located that is spiritual okay Pagan also does so. Only atheists said there is nothing like that. But every other person said there is something, you know, like that. So that is a spiritual minded. All right now. So because this service, it is spiritual. It's not physical. The spiritual. That's one to dig into because the physical will unveil the spiritual. Here I am, second, uh, uh, excuse me, first uh, Corinthians 2 13. I read you can read 1 to 16 also 1 to 15 but I'm just picking up the part of it of uh, 13 which things also we speak not in the words which makes wisdom with with uh, which means with uh, wisdom teacheth but which the Ruach HaKodesh teacheth comparing spiritual things with a spiritual that is the place I want to get to all right now the same uh, chapter excuse me first Corinthians chapter 12 I read just one we can read it all it's talking about spiritual gift I read one now concerning spiritual gifts brethren I will not have you ignorance that is what I want to prove spiritual that is a gift and that spiritual gift will not manifest physically in you but altogether it happened first in the spirit realm so that's what we want to talk about here Okay, here I am, Romans 1 chapter 20, excuse me, 1 verses 20, I read now. For the invisible, the invisible is spiritual, okay? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the word are clearly seen. You see? You see the physical, you know, pet or sex. All right now. The physical is unveiling the spiritual. Be understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, you can't you really, really, you know, ha you don't have no excuses. Sex is not for boyfriend. Mm -mm. It's not. All these places I just cut out, it, it is not, you don't have no excuses to justify it. Like a. Uh, James Swally said Jesus make him to be a gay. Uh, James Robinson said Jesus make him to be a gay. We're going to see all this in part today. This is the perversion of it. But you have no excuses. Okay. Here I am. Mati Yahoo. 6, 9 to 10. You can read it 9 to whatever. <laughs> Alright now. I take it from now. When the apostles ask Yahushua to teach them. How to pray and what to pray for. Ah, excuse me. All right, now I read now. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, our Lord be thine. This is worshipped. Okay, you need to first of all worship Him. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to know that you have a Father. That is the first step to take. You know, you have a Father right where you have a Father where which is a spiritual. This is on C, you can see. That's why his son comes. What you see is son and that you see it further. So secondly, you, you you need to know. You know you need to know where he lives. He lives in heaven. <laughs> Allah lives here on earth. The very grandpa of all liars. They told you you need to worship him. First of all, you need to know you have a father. Secondly, you need to know where your father's house is. And thirdly, you need to worship him. Now, listen now the fourth one. Thy kingdom come. There's kingdom that needs to come. The one in heaven needs to come down here on earth. Listen now. After that one has come, the kingdom in heaven come down here on earth. Listen now. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There is a will going on about this very... <laughs> first of all, let me first of all just say this in the, with a very clear heart. Okay. I know when we are dealing into these mysteries, it makes a lot of people, lots, so, much, so many, you know, uncomfortable. Whereby the truth is everywhere from the royal law. 
but you don't want to dive into that truth you don't want to dig into that truth you don't want to be planted and be rooted into that truth you now begin to see success as a something that originated from me so first of all i would like to let you know about this if you know this is going to make you uncomfortable you better take a walk okay just take a leave because i can't compromise like what aaron did aaron simply knew you know to compromise it is wicked aaron simply knew you know to worship other deity the people of the book may not have did that but rather he compromised you see so i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna explore i'm gonna really really expose it through the royal law so if you know it's gonna make you uncomfortable that says originated from heaven excuse me brother excuse me sister you better take a walk hmm? i rather have just one viewer you know establishing the truth rather than be having a thousand viewers or million viewers you know with a lie being filled with a lie i know a lot of people a lot of few people love you know to be deceived you love lies but we are not doing that here because i'm worthy of salvation we need to dig into the mysteries of Abbe yehuwa so right now there's a we in heaven going on that will needs to be unveiled or established here on earth also is our prayer but you are running away you don't want to pray the will of Abbe yehuwa to be done here on earth all right now so we are digging into the first mystery where did they, what did they go for spiritual secret sweet smelly savor service okay of this work called so that is what they go for it's spiritual you know it is sacred you know it is sweet it has wonderful perfume mm -hmm. and it's service and savor until i be yehua service mm -mm. it is spiritual you you're gonna get get confused you know get convinced excuse me i rebuke you serpent i've done more than enough get them behind me in yehua's mighty name I go by the name of Abbe Yehua. So right now, you're gonna get, you know, horrible <laughs> shanda baba. Convinced after we are done with this, except you are not, a, you know, you are a lie. If except you are not a truth lover, except you are the, in the other camp of, you know, Allah is the grand pop of all liars. Eh? Here I am, Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent. In twin from the top to the bottom and the earth did shook and the rock rent. do you think that is a small mystery as soon as my king gave up the spirit this is temple this is holies of holies the curtain like here now here is the curtain you see how it's five pillar I'm gonna unveil that also in part two you see the court as soon as Yahushua gave out the spirit, you don't see what is inside there. But as soon as he gave out the spirit, that court what is right from the top down to the uh, uh tip a butter. Okay, so no more secret. The secret inside here is unveiled. The veil is being you know it, it was being you know get out of the way, he was being taken out of the way for you to see what is inside the holies of holies. That's what we want to unveil over here. Stay tuned. But if it's gonna make you uncomfortable, please can you take a walk? Because my ma mouth is gonna be open so so widely, okay? <laughs> Don't dare. <laughs> so I bring it more closer. Here is the veil. Inside is holies of holies. Only three objects is being found over there. Here is the veil. This is what shield the holies of holies. But as soon as Yahushua gave up the spirit, here it was rent from here way down. That the secret is exposed that is, what, that is what i want to make known unto you now what is inside what is going on in the holies of holies stay tuned all right now there's a mystery we need to know because the veil is already being rent we need to see the holies of holies no more mystery inside the in, in any in it here i am in the book of anuka 16 i take from verses 2 if you have it you can read all 16 i read verses 2 and now as to the watchers who have set thee to intercede for them who had who had a be a for time in heaven say to them you have been in heaven but all the mysteries have not yet been revealed to you and you know one less ones and though and this in the okay yes you know one less ones so even though all these deity, Allah that fell from glory, Jesus that fell from glory, although they, they were once in heaven, of course, 
But they, th they thought they knew the mystery already of all the mysteries of Abbe Yehovah. That was why they rebelled. Rather, the one you knew it is just Job three sixteen. Okay, they are more deeper in it, but you don't know that. You you have no idea. You thought Abbe Yehovah, you know, get stopped or finished with only Job three sixteen. That was why they rebelled. But there is more to unveil. So right now, let's go more deep inside this world called sex. The very first alphabet we see is spiritual. Let's, you know, unveil that more. All right, now. Exodus Ashimo 25, verses 8 to 9. So we want to dig into these mysteries that is going on that spiritual. You know, we are the temple of Abba Yehovah, isn't it? Here is the temple. <laughs> but we are the temple. So what is going on inside this temple? That is also going on in use. The spiritual one is going on over here. The very one you carry out physically. All right now. Uh, Shemot 25, 8 to 9. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I shown thee after the pardon of the tabernacle mm -hmm. and the pardon of all the instruments thereof. Evil, evil so shall ye make it and they shall make an ark of sheet of wood okay i'm gonna hang over there we are coming right back here so you see the tabernacle here is it this is the tabernacle hmm? inside what is going on inside over there the one you have on earth is a replica you are the temple of abbey are you going to deny that all right now here is the temple and the temple was being wrecked i see that yahushua gave out the spirit this cutting that the, the, the veil that shield that covered the holies of holies <laughs> was being right. So let's dig into what is over there. You are the temple. We are the temple of Abba Yahweh, isn't it? Here is the temple. Where some worship powerful is going on. We are just right in Exodus 25, 8 to 9. Abba Yahweh said he needs to make that tabernacle according to the pardon shunt him that is according you know whatever we have here it is a replica of what is going on in the heavenlies okay so this or uh, beauty or uh, whatever uh tabernacle is a pardon is is what is in the heavenlies okay we see that in hebrew is what we have over there up over there so here is the replica so i want to see the one up there in order for we you know to get along with these deep mysteries this one is also heavy meat the very first alphabet okay uh -huh. here i am revelation 15 i take five there is a tabernacle in heaven and the replica is here on earth i read and after that i looked and i behold excuse me and after that i looked and behold the temple of of the tabernacle of uh, the testimony in heaven was opened no more secret eh? But you are seeing it as a secret. The very moment Yahushua gave out the spirit, this cutting, this is the cutting that was burnt in Matthew 27 51. Have you ever wondered one day why should, what, what does that have to do with the work of the cross? If it is not important for your salvation to know what is going on inside the temple, why was it right? Okay, now the holies of holies. That is where it was right, not the outer court, not the inner court, the holies of holies, the cutting, the veil. This was separate. This is why you cannot see holies of holies. But when he gave out the spirit, this cutting was rent from top to the bottom. Everything was exposed. Abba Yahuwah is using woman these days to dig out the mystery of him that is already going on in heaven, down here on earth. You are mammary. All right now. So I read verses 8. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of Yahuwah. Because that is where it is. And from his power. And no more we are able to enter into the temple till the seven. Okay. All right. Now, the temple is open. The, the temple, the tabernacle is already being sealed. So let's put some more. All right. Now, Revelation 21, I just read three. Well, if you know, you can take it from one. I'm taking three. Okay. Or should I? Two. Or uh, one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth. We had passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, I just saw the holy city, New Yerushalayim, coming down from Yehuwa out of heaven, prepared as a bride, a daughter for her husband. Okay, and in other words, the earth should be masculine, uh, feminine, 
why the heaven is going to, is, is going to be called masculine because the earth is being called bright prepare as a bright you know for our husband so the earth should be you know feminine why the heavens will be masculine three now and i heard a great voice out of heaven say behold the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and Yahuwah himself shall be with them and be their Elohim so what is tabernacle in this concept it has to be uh, a wife the tabernacle the presence of Abba Yahuwah in this tabernacle the presence of Abba Yahuwah is right in this tabernacle it's going to dwell over there with us let's put some more I know you, you're, gonna, you're not going to get convinced until you see mysteries, until you see wonders, until you see, you know, until you see before you believe Thomas. We're going to put some more. Is this just a light one of it? Now I'm reading verses 9. That's a chapter. Revelation. And there, and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride. The Lamb's wife. We see Yerushalayim or the new earth is a location and it's also, you know, a wife. Mm -hmm. It's also a wife. It's a location, it's a people, it's a wife. All right now. Okay, Revelation level 19 now. So after we are done with the tabernacle and the ark, so no, first of all, we are dealing with the, uh, the tabernacle over here. Okay, so after that we proceed now and check out what is inside this tabernacle, holies of holies, where the service is going on. I read now, 19, 11, 19, Revelation 11, 19. And the temple of Yehovah was opened in heaven. And there was seen in this temple the ark of his covenant. Okay. When this temple was being opened, they not see and see what did they see in the temple of Abeyewa? Only the ark of the covenant, the ark of testimony of his testimony. So right now, what to unveil? Now we are done with the temple. We are the temple of Abeyewa, like uh, Apostle Shehu saith, First Corinthians six. We're gonna also unveil that in part two. He said, "You are the, your body is the temple of Yehua. Therefore, glorify him with your own body, because." First Corinthians 3, uh, 15 to 17 says, You are the temple of Abba Yahweh. Say anyone who defiled that temple, he will Yahuwah destroyed. And you are his temple. And we are dealing with the temple. <laughs> so now that we are done with the temple, we see there is a temple in heaven. Where, uh, there is also a temple. Yeah, you and me, we are the temple of Yahuwah. You and uh, yeah, we see when the temple of Abiyawa was being opened in heaven, what what they will find over there? The ark of his testimony, the ark of the covenant. So now we want to uh, explore the ark of the covenant. We are done with the temple pets. Now we are going to the ark of the covenant because inside that temple there is something inside that temple called ark of the covenant, and only that three, only the, uh, that is only uh what you're gonna find in the holies of holies. Okay, the Ark of the Covenant. So, what to unveil? What is that? Because upon this Ark of the Covenant, that is where the mercy seat is. Excuse me. That is where the mercy seat is. That is where Abba Yahweh sits. He sat upon the Ark of the Covenant. So, let's unveil what is that Ark of the Covenant. In order for you to respect sex, in order for you not to misuse this glory, it will be better you understand the significances of this work of sex. In order for you to give glory and to Abbe Yehuwah. Upon the Ark of the Covenant, there we found the mercy seat. The mercy seat is being placed upon the Ark of the Covenant where Abbe Yehuwah seated. He rested on the Ark of the Covenant. And who is the Ark of the Covenant? Let's unveil that. This is what it is. This is the Ark of the Covenant. These are the two cherubims. And Abba Yahweh always sits, is always on top of that Ark of the Covenant. So let's, you know, dig more into that. Here I am, what to unveil, who is the Ark of the Covenant? It's a person, okay? Oh, my nose. And we know the Ark of the Covenant. Maybe I'm, I'm going to read it out so how was, how was it being made? We know <clears throat> Yahushua is the tree of, the, of, of life. 
a tree came from wood or wood came from tree serpent is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we know Yazrael in Romans chapter 11 they are tree the good olive tree we know the Gentiles are the white olive tree okay that came from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and we also know Nebuchadnezzar was also a tree okay so a seed came from uh, a wood came from tree so the ark of the covenant is a woman that is one of them is a policy but the one that is being given you here on earth that is how you that is that just, that is just how i you were made it then i'm going to unveil until maybe in part two or this still part one why abba you put it in this way because that ministry now is in Ezra. but there's a term and needs to be making for it in order for it to come out after the great tribulation and the mystery is being exposed. So we are aware the Ark of the Covenant is a, is a policy. All right now. Uh, Hebrews 1 and 9. I take from 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service. Hmm, and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made the first. Where it was the candlestick and the table and the shield bread. Which is called the sanctuary. And after this second, after this, the second veil, okay, that is where right, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of holiest, <laughs> who, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid around the bed with gold, wherein was the gold part that had manna and Aaron's rod that burned it, and the tab uh, tablet of the covenant. This is all you're going to find inside the ark. And over it, the cherubims of glory shadow in the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak in, uh, speak particular. Yes, we, my brother hung it over there, but me, I will go more further, okay? All right now. So we see already what contains. What is what, what, what is this inside the ark of the covenant? Only three objects. Uh, the mana pot. That is a pot of uh, manna, light bread, and the word arrow staff, okay, burned it, and what the royal law. So, what to see? What was that? Who is the ark of the covenant? That inside the ark of the covenant, this is the only three objects you're going to find over there. All right, now here I am, Exodus 25. I think I take from 17 or so, or 16, okay, and the state thereof, 17, yeah. And thou shalt make a mousy seat. Of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of uh, of gold of a beauty work. Thou shalt make them in the two ends of the mouse seat, and make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mouse seat shall yeah, make the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mouse seat with their wings, and their face shall look one to another towards the mouse seat. Shall they, their face shall the faces of the cherubims be, and thou shalt put the mouse seat. Listen now, and thou shalt put the mouse seat above upon. The ark, and uh, in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in the commandment unto the children of Israel. <laughs> this is the seat of Abraham, and this is the ark of the covenant. Abba Yahweh is always on the seat. Yeah. Because it's spiritual. Says it's spiritual. It's always, this is it. Okay. Abba Yahweh always on top. The ark. The mercy seat. Yes, the mercy seat. This is the ark. And inside this ark, let's see. Who is the ark? I'm making it until wood. It's being made of wood. We know, you know. Yeah, I proved that already. Mm -hmm. So right now, I want to check into those three objects inside the ark of the covenant. 
And who is the Ark of the Covenant? It's a person, okay? It's a person, okay? So what to do with the objects? There are three objects found inside the Ark of the Covenant first before we unveil finally who is the Ark of the Covenant. Here I am, John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh hmm? and, dwelt, um, and dwelt among us and we behold his glory, the glory as the, as of the only begotten of, of the Father, full of grace and truth, is the word. He said, because they took the Ten Commandments, or the two tablets, that is the number one object we are unveiling right now. So let's go now to the pot of manna, or, yeah, the bread, the earth, earth in the wilderness. We unveil that already, is the word, it is Yahushua HaMashiach, inside the Ark of the Covenant. So now we'll go for the a part of manna or manna pot. Uh, here I am, uh, John 6, 35. And Yahushua said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never taste. It's the bread we found inside the Ark of the Covenant. When he, were rebu when he was rebuking the Pharisees, I make it so clear, that uh, the bread they eat because he is more better, he is the, he is, he is, he is the more perfect way into the heavenlies. Okay, now he is the bread of life. That's where I really actually want to prove. Okay, and that we saw it right inside the ark of the covenant. The two, ob the two objects we prove already. So, one more to go. You see, when he was dealing with the Pharisees, he make it so clear unto them the one they ate in the wilderness because that is the old system of it all. They still die. But anyone that ate it of me now, he will live eternal because that is the perfect, more unique way into heaven. Okay, they ate of that. You know, that was physical. They, they still passed away. But this one is spiritual. Okay, this is the more better way because it's the consummation because the one they ate is in the consummation. You know, it still have to pass up, uh, pa passed up before the original one come before the author of life surface here on earth. Because until he shed that blood, everything in the Old Testament, sorry, they are just serving for temporary service. His blood is the one to consummate it. Oh, that was why they died. But you also see here, we also die. You know, oh, what is the difference? <laughs> what is the difference now? Yeah, the eat of it, they still die wickedly, you know, some perished, you know. But if you eat of this new one, you are not going to die, except the one that also going to eat it and still do wickedly, you also die, okay? Because Apostle Shaw make it so clear that many of you, because you take the bro uh, this bread and the wine on a worthy manner, it's how many of you are fallen asleep and why some of you is sick, okay? When you take it on a worthy manner, it brings judgment of domination, like what it did, you know, in, in the old time. All right, now, so we want to unveil the prince's side, the road. Okay. Uh, Hebrew can read all chapter 7, but I'm picking just one verse 24. Uh, should I take from 23? And the and they truly we are made priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Okay, 24. But this man, because he continueth ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. Yahushua is the eternal high priest. It is unchangeable in the order of Melchizedek. You can keep reading. You're going to find it all over there. So the burner staff of Aaron or Rod is the eternal high priest, which is, which is Yahushua. And the part we see is the word of Abiyahua, which is Yahushua. And the law, it is the, the word of Abiyahua again. And this is the only three object inside this ark of the covenant. Shall we put some? Uh, shall I? She die. All right. Now we unveil what what that contains already. So now what to unveil? Who is the ark of the covenant? In order for what for we to know what sex is, where they came from, who is involved, and who is not involved. That's why we are doing this very segment. In order for you to honor and understand that it never originated here on earth. It will never be given uh, out because of you. He originated from the author of life, Yehovah himself. So right now we want to see who is the Ark of the Covenant. Like we already, we know wood came from tree. And we know tree is human. Okay? We knew that already. Yeah, are you going to dispute that fact? Of course not. Here I want to who is the Ark of the Covenant. Look chapter 135. 
You can take it from 26 way down to 35, but I'm already only 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Ruach HaKodesh shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of Yehovah. How did he do it? On top. The Ruach HaKodesh come on top of her. I bet your is always on top. Get life. This happened here on earth between you and me. We knew you believe Messiah has a father. Of course, how did he do it? The Ruach HaKodesh is going to come upon thee as a husband come upon his wife. I bet your is always on top. He came upon the Ark of the Covenant. And want to see who is the Ark of the Covenant. Eternal, yeah, is this city? It's his rest. Okay. All right, now here I am. We are proving now who is the Ark of the Covenant. I have not yet made, I know, I am letting you know already. I'm making note to you already. It's a person and it's a woman. But I'm going to let you know who is that woman. Maybe you know already by now. Exodus said the Ruach HaKodesh is going to come upon you. The glory of Abayo is going to overshadow you. So let's see now who is the Ark of the Covenant. Here I am. Uh, Exodus 40, 34. There... A cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of Yahweh filled the temple. Okay, and Moshe was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Yes, when about with Yahweh involved, he gets man out of the way. When he came in with the power of his fullness, he just gets man out of the way. They were unable. Moshe, sorry, you build the ark. I know you build the temple. You did it for me as a because after this is the installation of it. This is the first service of it. When Abiyawa gave him the how the ark, the temple, everything needs to be done, the tabernacle. As soon as he dedicated unto Abiyawa, this is what took place. Exactly what also took place where a child was being planted in the womb of Maria. Okay, she is the ark of the covenant. We are still putting some more. We are going to prove it powerfully unto you where Abiyawa seated on top of the ark of the covenant and the rock hakode shall come upon thee and when i see the glory of Abiyawa, say you, shall, you, you will be overshadowed and we see when the temple was being dedicated the glory of Abiyawa overshadowed the, the, the tabernacle fat moses could he enter yes when Abiyawa is in fully movement he get mad he, he will just you know remove me out of the way all right now here i am second Samuel six seven and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzzah, and Yahweh smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of Yahweh, because you are not worthy. That is why any man, oh no, <laughs> you are not worthy. When you touch a woman that is not yours, this kind of destruction is, is going on among the men, because woman is, a, is holy unto her husband, and we're going to see more into that in part two. So right now you see, Abba Yehua killed him because you are not the Ark of the Covenant. You are not worthy. Only the high priest needs to go there. No one else but just the high priest needs to do service over there. A body of a woman is only being made just for one man. Any man that tore into pieces is going to face the wrath of Abba Yehua. I know in fact, billions <laughs> is going to face this judgment of unworthy sex. You know, when serpent Genesis 3, when he touched the very first woman, he got killed. Abba Yehua pronounced causes of eternal domination upon him. Go to Revelation 10, uh, 20, 50, uh, 10. He was not being cast into the link of Father. That brought about his death, eternal, no mercy. Because you touch the Ark of the Covenant, Adam, the first Adam alone needs to touch that woman. Not you. You see who I touched? He got killed. Because you are not worthy. Only the high priest needs to go there. Okay? So, serpent touched, he died. He was being, you know, pronounced eternal domination. And we see where Abayawa did it. Let's put some more. Because we know Maria is also uh, like that of the first Kawa. Because she is the one Abayawa used to restore the first Kawa. The first Kawa make, brought, brings about this destruction. Okay. So we know the second, uh, the first, uh, the Maria is playing the part which the first Kawa couldn't. Okay, but anyone that touches that got killed. Yara, okay, this one place, second somewhere, six nine. And David was afraid of Yehua that day, and he said, "How shall the ark of Yehua come to me?" 
exactly the same question we also found from Elizabeth. Here on Luke chapter 1, 43. And whence is this to me, that the murder of my Adonai should come to me? Okay. He that will say, how can the ark, how am I going to bring it, how can it come to me? And Elizabeth answered, the mother of my daughter, she come to me. We put some more. All right now. We come back again. Second Samuel 6, 19, uh, 6, 16 now. And as the ark of Yahweh came into the city of David, Michael saw's uh, son's daughter looked through a widow and saw King David leaping. And dancing before Yehovah, and she despised him in her heart. I'm not after that, okay? Dancing and leaping. Let's see who also does that. All right, now here I am. Luke chapter one forty one. Does this really, really amaze you that this proving of the ark of the covenant they are just in one one chapter? Second Samuel says talks about it all. Luke chapter one talks about it all. And it has to do with the very mother of Yahushua HaMashiach. She is the wife of Abba Yehuwa. That is the spiritual part of it all. I read now Luke 141. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Maria, the baby leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. You see, when the ark was being brought into the city of David, he leaped and danced. When the ark of the covenant also entered into the house of Elizabeth, the baby in his womb, or her womb also lived, you know, for glory. <laughs> Coincident? How okay, can we put some more? All right, now we are back again to Second Samuel 6 11 now. And the ark of Yahweh conti uh, continued in the house of Obadidon three months. Three months, the ark of the covenant of Obadidon was there. Now, so get a precept. All right now, back again to Luke chapter 1, verse 56. All right now, Obededon stays, or the Ark of the Covenant stays in the house of Obededon three months. Okay, I read. And Maria abode with her about three months and returned to her house. She also stays with Elizabeth for three months. This is coincident, you think so? Mm -mm. Out of the mouth or two or three witnesses, we even go down more than three. Testimony should be established. We go more than how many now? Back here again, second Samuel says one to two. Again, that would gather together all the chosen men of Israel thirty thousand. And that would arose and went with all the people that were with him from Belial of Judah. Okay, from the El of uh, where Jehuda to bring up thanks the ark of Yehovah, whose name is called by the name of Yehovah of hosts, that dwelleth between the cherubims. Here is the between the cherubims where he dwells. His seat is upon the ark of the court. You know the Abba Yehovah is taking rest in his wife. That is what it is. In another words. After a man, you know, have really struggled and struggled and struggled, you know, you have all that you want. What, where are you going to take your rest? You're going to be taking rest in your wife's vagina. That is what I bet your wife is doing. That is why it's being called spiritual service. Okay? All right now. I read now. We are getting a precept also from Luke chapter 139 now. And Maria arose in those days and went into the hill country, which with ace into a city of Yehudah. Exactly the same place, the same location it with King David. Exactly the same place, Maria also went. Coincident? Okay. <laughs> you see where we just read? Exactly the same city, the city of Yehuda, Judea, also, wherever. Where King David, the Ark of the Covenant was, exactly the same city, Maria also went in haste. He went to that hill, that city. Of Yehuda, this is not coincident at all. Abba Yehuda is saying something powerful here. This is the secret. This is the veil that is already being read. The secret needs to be exposed. Okay. Uh -huh. Back again to Second Samuel 6, 22 now. 
and I will yet be more vile than thus, and I will be uh, I, and I will be bales in my own sight. And of the main servants which thou say, which thou had spoken of, of them shall I be uh, uh, shall I be had in honor. You see, when the ark was being brought, the king that we dance and celebrate and jubilate, you know, the daughter and son are beginning to speak nonsense. So what did they do? And I said, this male servant, they are going to be looking down you doing this. And I said, no, no, no. These servants, they are going to honor me. Forget story. They are going to they are going to honor me because I have done something powerfully. They are going to honor me with all their hearts. Not to insult me, not at all. Exactly the same thing Maria also said. Let's go there now. All right now, back again to Luke chapter 1, 46 now to 55 or so. Where do I hang this? Out to the very end. Well, no, 50. Yeah, 55. No, 6. This one end, end at 56. Okay, now I'm ready 50, 46 to 56. Yes. I'm only going to read this part, okay? For this is now look what for this is. Am I said, my soul doeth magnify Yahuwah, and my spirit hath rejoiced in Yahuwah my Savior, for he hath regarded the lower state of his uh, handmaid. For behold, from angst forth all generations shall call me blessed. You see, why can that we brought the ark and how and how he was dancing? Micah saws that I say they are gonna be ready for you because you know they saw some unlawful whatever from you. Kid that would say cut it off. That is a lie. These people they are gonna handle me exactly what this woman also said, Maria. From now onward, our generation is gonna call me blessed. They are gonna recognize who I am. They are gonna recognize that this is who I am for Abe Yehuwah. Okay. So we know by now you know who is the ark of the is a person. It's not a wood. <laughs> As you see, so uh -uh. this this are sex idiom. This are sexual in the window found. That is what I want to look into now. Right in the temple. Hmm? Now Beresh, excuse me, tell her Psalm 99 verses 1. Yehovah reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. This is where he's seated. You see, this is where he's, here is Mel's seat. The cherubim will stretch forth their two hands and uh, cover by Yehuwah. This is his wife, the Ark of the Covenant. Wood, we know already came from tree. That uh, I unveil already powerfully to the glory of Abbe Yehuwah. Okay? So it's not just an, a person, it's not just a wood, he's speaking of a person. We know who she is. Through all this proof, it is Maria, the wife of Abbe Yehuwah. She is the, and we see what was our womb. We see what the Ark of the Covenant contain, exactly what our womb also contain. Three objects inside the Ark of the Covenant, the same found in the womb of Maria. A place to place, a place to pray for, of the Ark of the Covenant. The same was so far from Maria, she is the Ark of the Covenant. When the Temple of Abbe Yehuwah opened Revelation level 19, the ark was being sealed. This is how you seal. This is how the ark was being sealed. Because I bet your wife is also going to raise this or pass it, somebody to unveil this mystery. That's what we start already. I just discovered this mystery now. Like I said, I'm going to be doing more of it. Because this is the part neglected by almost, you know, all. Oh, I'm going to be unveiling. I know it's tough. Yeah, but I'm going to be doing it. Because it is provable. It is scriptural. So I'm not afraid. It is pure from the heavenlies. So we are looking into the spiritual part. So right now, how is it? How uh, how is it sex? How is it also spiritual between man and a woman? Because we see the spiritual part already. So right now, this how is being called spiritual. Of yeah, the uh, phallical stimulating homos. Phallical stimulating homos is the sixth homos according to the tutorials. Okay, and we also have scripture backing. According to the tu uh, tutorials, is the cyst omos, and this very follicular stimulating omos responsible for any sex behavior. Because this follicular uh, stimulating omos, it has to deal with 
the reproductive organ of a woman and the reproductive organ of a man. That is his part. He is the cause, the release of the egg, okay? And he is the prepared sperm for the man. He is the one that to prepare the sperm, okay? And he is the one to cause the releases of the egg, the one that we we'll call it, yes, ovulation. This follicle stimulating almost responsible. You see, after you have cleansed the womb, okay, he knew the quantity already of a sperm needed, okay, he will prepare it and drop into the testers of the man. Now, after you have done, the egg is already being released, the sperm is already, already being prepared and being dropped into the testers of a man. Therefore, he will not put the thought in the heart of the man. He will not put the thought in the heart of the woman to come together and do this holy service. You will not be seen because I bet you will not walk with our flesh, neither our soul. Let me first of all prove it. Why is it spiritual? All right, now here I am. Second, uh, first Thessalonians five twenty three. I'm gonna present it to you over here. And the very Yahuwah of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray Yahuwah, your spirit, and your soul, and your body be preserved, uh, blameless. Until the coming of Yehoshua HaMashiach, or until the coming of our Adonai Yehoshua HaMashiach. You see, you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Which part Abba Yehoshua is working with? Your spirit. It has nothing to do with your flesh nor your soul. But your flesh needs to contain your soul and your spirit. That is what we also see in the body of Abba Yehoshua. Uh, Yehoshua the Father, Yehoshua the Son, Yehoshua the Ruach HaKodesh. We have this three parts in us. Abba Yahweh also have this three parts in him. His own, he is capable, eternal, to separate himself into th uh, three different beings. But we are not. But yeah, we function in this three dimension. So which part Abba Yahweh is communicating with? When well, I come to this sexual part, not just only se sexual part, in our communication, but due to this segment, we are dealing with the mystery of sex. Which part? Now, Abba Yahweh created that phallical, stimulating hormones okay he is the one to control to tell the phallic stimulating hormones now work with the both man and woman both of them he is the one to prepare abba yahweh is the one it's an angel this phallic stimulating hormones is an angel don't get it twisted it's an angel in a holy people is a demon in unholy people when you take this sex on a worthy manner they must stand over there because we see two witnesses going on right in sex. These two angels need to bear these witnesses while Abayawa sat upon the ark of the is his, is his, his rest. He sat upon the ark of the covenant. And these two angels will also have it in us. These two angels play a very powerful role in our sexual path. This is why it is spiritual. The first almost though, that is going to cause the releases of the egg, that is going to prepare the womb for fertilization, it is called follicle uh, stimulating hormones. And the very seventh one is the, is the one, is the power of ejaculation. Called interstitial cell stimulating hormones. Interstitial cell stimulating hormones. Homers, that is the seventh homers. He is the one, after the sixth homers has not planted this attitude in the heart of a man, so do we put it in their both side heart. That all of a sudden, Abba Yehua is going to command this angel, that is bearing witnesses also for him, is going to command this angel now to minister to the man, to minister to the woman. He is the angel that is responsible for sex. Okay? So it's going to plant it, the hunger, the taste, you know, the zeal of it. Now you will not be feeling something. Before you do, you just, you know, touch your wife. You drag her cl closer. You start, you the whole, it, that is why it is holy serving. Spiritual, uh, sacred, okay? It's holy. Spiritual, sacred, you know, a sweet, smelly, savor service. The angels took over. This angel, the one, the very one, they are called follicle stimulating hormones. It is an angel. Abba Yawa always put these two witnesses to bear witness for a man and a woman, like as they are bearing witnesses for him. 
He said these two angels need to look to each other. That is, do your part. As soon as the sixth almost is finished, the seventh almost take over. Okay? The seventh almost just took over. So the sixth almost is to prepare the sperm into the testers of the man and prepare the woman, you know, fertilizing the uterus and causes the releases of the egg. It's the work of him. He does it in the both sides. Why? After he have done with that, he was irresponsible for sex behavior. That's you now begin to feel sexual, you know. It is, but that is how you work with your spirit. That Abba Yawa will command this angel now. He's working, he's passing his message to your spirit. Right away, your, your spirit will now send it the signal to your soul. Right away, your soul will send it now to your flesh. And your flesh is the one to carry out that assignment. Is the one to carry out that holy service. This is why it's spiritual because it invo Abba Yawa involves. Holy angels involves. That is why you must not get it wrong the other way around. That is where demon is not also going to be involved. We will see that in part two. This is how it was. This is why it is spiritual. Your spirit, Abba Yawa, will just command your spirit. When he wants you guys to do the holy service. We command your spirit, come over here. Your spirit is always, when you are being saved, your spirit is right there with him. Right away, the sixth homos understood already. He now begin to play his part. Planted this you know, behavior in your heart. Also in the heart of the woman. That is why I said, when woman refuses the man, you blasphemed. You, you did not reject only the man. You reject Abba, your one heart's desire. You reject the angel's heart desire. Because you're going to stop them. Or you're going to cut those services away. Okay? You see, as soon as the sixth almost is done with his own part, the seventh almost took over. Causes the power of ejaculation. Either for enjoyment or for planting of seed. You see, so this is why it's spiritual. You don't know how it is being done. It is heavenly. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. That is the title of the message, the mystery of sex. Okay? So in other words, when the seventh almost causes releases, that is where you now get the rest. Uh, what is the seventh? What is the number seven? We know the number seven, it is it makes rest. It is the number of Abba Yehovah. Simply may rest. He walked from day one to day six. On the seventh, he rested. It is the number of heaven. It is the day Abba Yehovah rested. And he also planned that homos that is going to be causing ejaculation in order, for, in order for you to have rest as well. He now gave that almost and planted it also in number seven, which is called interstitial cell stimulating almost. It is the rest. You know, after grandy, 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 you release this, you know, that pure water. Therefore, you rest. That is melatonin. It induces sleep. You will not sleep like a baby because you have done what you need to be done. What needed to be given out, you gave it out already. Okay? So therefore you now rest. Genesis 2. I bet you were rested. That is why you also put that almost in number 7. It is the power of ejaculation. After ejaculation, that is the melatonin. Therefore you rest. It induces sleep. Okay? So the final part of this very first alphabet. You know, I'll let you know this one is also a heavy meat. Yes, that is how Abayawa always does it. The first mystery is always heavy and heavy. All right now, so we are going now to the altar. How the service is taking place right in the altar of Abayawa. This is why it's called spiritual. We see the part here on earth already. What is going on right in the altar? How the bullock needs to be, you know, sacrificed right in the altar. So let's see. What was that also? It is sexual in the window. We only uh, we are we have already seen how holy special sex is that two angels need to bear witnesses. Falako stimulating almost is the angel of the left hand. Interstitial stimulating almost is the angel of the right hand. That's turn each time you are doing that holy service. These two deities tend. And perform and doing their their, their 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 jobs, but wherever you take it in the other way around, two demons also is going to stand, you know, and be doing this wickedness over the very testimony for your says, okay, that says bad, that is wickedness. We'll see that in part two. So right now, I want to unveil the sacrifices 
going all right in the altar. That is sexual into when they give it unto you and me. From here, we're going to find it out. Here I am, Ephesians 5. I read verses 1. Be ye therefore followers of Yehovah as dear children. You must be his follower. I don't understand. Why should you say, why is people finding this so difficult that uh, sex is originated from men, not from Abba Yehovah? Why must you do that? Why must you see in these ways? I know this is, a, is the most difficult matter in all matter Abba Yehovah give unto us. In every uh, 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 office Abba Yehovah gave unto us, this is the most difficult. No one want to look into this. But yeah, he said we should be his follower. That is whatever he do, we need to do. Wherever he goes, we need to go. Wherever he sit, we need to sit. When he speak, we speak. When he act, we act. Whatever he do, we do. Eh? He said you should be his follower. So why are you not saying he's not a part of it? Verses 2 are it. And walk in love, as Yahushua also hath loved us. Okay? And hath given him some listener. And had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Yehuwa for a sweet a smelly savor. What is, what is the first title of this worker's sex? Spiritual, sacred, sweet, smelly, savor, service. It is service. Do you see how it works? It is spiritual, sacred. It is holy. It is sweet, very is it fat, nothing as sex. It is so sweet. Its smell is wonderful. Its smell, it is often made by fire unto Abbey when you do it in holiness. Because it is eternal service. Okay? So right now, look at how our king did, did it for you and me. He gave himself. And he gave he had given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to Yehovah for a sweet smelly savor. Okay. It's an offering. Yes, the offering going on now in the altar. So we proceed to the tw to 22 now. We are coming right back there. That offering. That is what we are seeing already. How does it conjoin with the altar that we will unveil? Okay, 22. Now, wives, submit yourself unto, you, unto your whole husband as unto Yehovah. You see, this is why a wife needs to marry a godly man. A mother fears Yehovah. Because you are going to be submitted to him as you are submitted to Yehovah. You are going to be doing everything for him as see if you are doing it unto Yehovah. Because I mean, you are involved in this service. It's right there. He gave you the two homos. He gave you the two angels. Every one of us has terribly to burn it and to watch for this very holy service. Cause the preparation and cause the ejaculation. There's angel to prepare your heart for it. There's angel, you know, to fulfill it. That is phallacal stimulate almost the sixth angel. And interstitial stimulate almost the seventh angel. And we'll see that the ark of uh, uh, upon the ark of the cover of the two cherubims. Uh, that is the angel that is doing it. That is the angel that is also doing it for Abba Yehovah. Be his follower, he said. Woman is to marry a godly man. Because if you marry a wayward man, you are going to be uh, uh, submitting unto him as if you are doing it to serpent, to demons. 23. For husband is the head of the wife. Listen, I want to see that service now. For husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahushua is the head of the assembly, assemblies or congregation. And he is the savior, savior, savior of the body. Okay? Husband is the head. Of his wife. A wife don't have a head. But her husband. You see Marian. The ark of the covenant. She don't have a head. Who is her head? Abbe Yehuwa. Okay. Alright now. Let me give you the picture of the head. You see how Abbe Yehuwa sat upon the ark of the covenant. Because the mouse seat is always on top. You see this bullock sat upon the altar. In doing these holy services. Alright now. I'm not. I'm coming to this. I just want to first of all prepare your heart again. For the very last part of this. Here I am, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. A head. A woman don't have a head. Your husband rather is your head. I read. But I will have you know that the head of every man, it is Yahushua. It's the high priest eternal. And the head of the woman is the man. That your husband is your head. And the head of Yahushua, it is Yehua. Okay? So this is how it works. You see, woman don't have a head. Your husband is your head. Okay? 
Your husband is your head. Therefore, we must cover up your husband. So let's see how the covering or help is going on between Yehovah. We we'll see that of Yehovah already. We we'll see how the woman cover Yehovah. You know, helping him to bring into reality his heart desire. And we we'll also see that here on earth. How did the woman cover? In the womb. The womb is the covering. You see the ark of the covenant. These three objects was be planted inside that womb. Yahushua represents all three. The word, the arrow staff, the eternal high priest. And the bread. It represent all three. And we see all three was in the womb of the woman. This is how you cover up your head, woman. This is how you cover up your head. Because when you put it, put it over there, of course, in due time, you bring it up for him. This is the services. Going on, we see Abiyawa wife did it for him. And this is how a woman also need to do it for her husband. Mm -hmm. Now back to Ephesians 5.24 now. Therefore, as, he, uh, as the ministries... All assemblies is subject unto Yehoshua. So let <coughs> the wives be to, be to their own husband in everything. In all, it is says some pet. That is why, woman, you are just a baby before your husband. You need to be submissive in all and all, because as you are submitting unto, you are doing it for Abba Yehovah. And may Yahushua is your head, you need to also submit to your husband in order for woman to submit to you. That is the chinks of order that we just read. Yahushua submit to his father. You may you need to submit to Yahushua in all in all and all women in order for women to submit to you. When you yourself break the chains, sorry, the woman is not gonna do the part. Rather, this one is already is already been turned outside. The devil is gonna take over. 25. Now, husband, listen, I love your wives. Even as also Yahushua loved the ministry, the congregation, and gave himself for it, you see, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. This is how Yahushua said, This is how I did mine. I must also do the same for your wife. This is how I love my wife. I also did the same for her. 27. Now. Washing of water. We are going to see all this attitude. Right, found in the altar service. That he might present it to himself, a glorious congregation. Not having spot, a wrinkle, or any uh, such thing that, that any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You want your wife to look so wonderful in and out. This is how I say you should wash her by the washing of the word. Because that is how Yahushua did it. He gave himself. Are you going to be giving yourself to your wife? Listen, now we keep reading. So, all men to love their wives as though as their own bodies. That, that he that loveth his own wife loveth himself. Your wife is your flesh, is your body. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as Yahushua the ministry. This is, is, this, is, this, is this not blind off your mind? What does this husband relationship have to do with Yahushua relationship? Okay, I see. I also have access to the ministry. Of course, you know not. You need not, but there's something like that with one woman in the heavens. Okay, now you cannot hate your flesh. Okay, that is what the picture we see from the first Adam. That after his wife messed up, turning the whole place aside, that he still love her, he still go for her. You know, he still cover her up, he still give her a name. You know, they still live together. Exactly that is all Yahushua did for you and me. Regardless how futile we are, he still joined with us. Husband, this is how you need to do it for your wife. No matter how, you know, futile she are, you still need to love her and keep placing her. Because Adam never denied his own wife. Because his flesh over there is speaking about a woman. Because she was being taken from the side of the man. And there comes the woman. So you can't hate her. 13 now, for we are members of, okay, yeah, I read 29 already, yeah, 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Yeah, we are. This is the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall become woman, you see. Even though she have done that wickedness, but the husband still love her. Still care for her. Still take her in. Still bring her closer to his heart. 31 now. For this case shall man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall become one flesh. Okay. 
Listen now. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Yahushua and the ministry. He said this is a great mystery. So let's explore. Let's unveil this great mystery. This very first half. You see how tough it is? Yes, it is a great mystery of Abbe Yehuwa. Sex originated from Abbe Yehuwa. It is a great mystery. That was why immediately the son gave out the spirit. The temple, the veil, the cover, the shield, the holies of holies for we not to see what is going on there was being right. Now secret is exposed. That is why I call the understanding. Because Abbe Yehuwa wants us to look into it. He wants us to dig into this mysteries. He's bringing out one by one. You can never say you finish knowing Abbe Yehuwa. That is not true. If you do that, therefore you are serpent. Only serpent thought that he knew who is Abbe Yehuwa. He has already done finishing knowing Abbe Yehuwa. But Abbe Yehuwa now says in the book of Anuk chapter 16 verses 2. He said, no, the one, oh, you are being in heaven. But all the mysteries has it, you not yet been revealed to you. This one that you knew already, it is wordless. It is John 3 16, the way everyone can easily perceive. I had mystery inside of me, you knew nothing about. Job said, Can you tell us the number of Abbe Yowa years? No one can fish out the numbers of his years. There is a mystery in him. The very first alphabet of this worker says, Go for spiritual, sacred, sweet, smelly savor. Service. It is holy service, it is spiritual. We see how spiritual it is. Even you, you, man or woman, you can testify. You just see the husband, and I'm not speaking to the filthy pen. Something you know we just be planting into your heart. So let's unveil more. That is the spiritual. We see who is doing it. They are angel of to bear witnesses for sex. Says have an angel to bear witnesses for him. Oh no, out of the mouth or two or three witnesses' testimony has already been established. Man, what do you have in your loins? You have one penis and two testers. Woman, what do you have? Also, you also have two breasts and you know and your vagina. Huh? In fact, woman vagina also has three layers. As we see already, we see the outer court. We see the inner court. We see the holies of holies. The womb is the holies of holies. Okay? The inner court, we know what that is, where the appendix can go in. And the attacker, you know already the surface. We also got three. Okay. So we are going now to the service, sexual in the window service, right in the altar of Yahuwah given to you and me, in order for us to be able to break this mysteries. Because Apostle Shaul said this is great mysteries, not small mystery. This is very great. Alright now. We'll go for it. Alright now. Exodus Shemo 29, 80 from 25 and 35, you can read it all. It pertains to this very service. If you read it with the mindset of Abbe Yehua, his spirit is going to be ministering unto you. But don't read it with the mindset of the Christian, though you, you won't get nothing. Absolutely, you won't. When you read it with the mindset of the Christian, the sorry, you're going to miss, uh, miss it all. You will rationalize it. You better not just do that to, that to rationalize it. That is going to be of your own destruction. So it's better for you not to look into it than to look into it and rationalize it. That is twisted. That is blasphemy. I take 35 now. And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons according to all things which I have commanded thee. Seven days shalt thou consecrate them. We knew Aaron is the eternal, excuse me, is the high priest. And we knew Yahushua is the eternal high priest. And Aaron is playing the part of Yahushua here because he has Old Testament until Yahushua surface in the New. Meanwhile, Yahushua was still over there with him, even though it says no Old Testament. And we see already the head of Yahushua it is Abba Yehua. Yahushua is the head of the man. All right. So Yahushua is the head of Aaron. Okay. He needs to be consecrated for a whole seven days, which a day represents a thousand years for a seven thousand years for this service to be cleansed. 36 now I read. And thou shalt offer every day bullock for a sin offering for atonement every blessed day. Okay. And thou shalt cleanse the altar. Horrible Shandayaba. Who is the altar? Who is the altar? We are also coming to that. Where thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar. Tell me now what sin did altar did the altar needs to be cleansed just like that we know bullock uh bullock is also being called calf or it's also being called axe or axing is the same animal we know we specify animal okay yahushua is the lamb and also the lion 
the Ruach HaKodesh, the dove. You and me, we are sheep. Okay, we are the sheep of the kingdom. And you know, also, some of us also being called goats. Matthew 25, you can see goat over there. When you also go to Matthew, I think 7, you're also going to be seeing over there pugs and pig. Okay, dogs, excuse me, dogs and pigs. They are Gentile. Gentile is dog. Gentile, they are pigs. Gentile is also goat. Okay. We know uh, serpent is also an animal. Mm -hmm. And a beast as well. You see? So the bullock, it, it represents the patriarchs. The bullock always go for the patriarchs. We, the people of the book, we are the sheep of Yazrael. But the bullock, the patriarchs, they are the bullock. The bullock goes for them. Now we know Adam was the first patriarch. Okay, he was the first patriarch. Now this altar needs to be cleansed for a whole several days every day for the bullock to be sanctified, for the bullock to be placed upon the altar for every day for a whole several days. And this bullock, as it works, before this bullock is being sacrificed upon the altar, around the eternal, uh, excuse me, the high priest needs to place his hand upon the head. That is how he covered the bullock because Yahushua Aaron is playing the part of Yahushua. Yahushua is the one doing this now in Aaron, you know, covering the man and the man will cover the woman. This is how it was. That is the change of order for in order for the woman to be cleansed. You know, the woman brought about this disaster we are facing today. She brought about this calamity in our kingdom. So that is what Abbe Yahuwah is cleansing. Now the man needs to cleanse her. He said, husband, how are you going to cleanse your wife? Uh -huh, by the washing of the water. Yeah, also, I said, this is how I did it for all my... This is how I did it. And this is how you also need to do it for your wife. Now, can you be read to yourself what sin did Otta committed? That now Otta needs to be cleansed. So if the bullock represents a man, so what is the Otta represent? Therefore, because the Otta, the bullock needs to make a torment to cleanse the Otta. In order for the altar to be clear, I said this must be done for a whole seven days. That is seven and seven days shall thou make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it. And it shall be an holy uh, uh, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whosoever toucheth the altar shall be cleansed. Uh, be, yeah, shall be holy. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar. Okay. Two lamps of the first year. Okay. Uh, two lamps of the first year, day by day, continually. For a whole seven days, the bullock goes there. I will know who is the lamb. It is Yahushua. Morning, morning oblation, evening, evening oblation. We know already it is Yahushua, his first coming and his second coming. That is Yahushua in general, in total. He did it for everyone. But for personal husband to cleanse his wife, this is how you need to do it every day. This cleansing is every day right in the altar. Can we first of all expose who is the altar? Before we put more into it, how the bullock is cleansing the altar. Here was the institution of the altar, the ark of the covenant, the cherubims, and all and all. So here I am, Shimon 20, Exodus 20, 24-25. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings. Thy sheep and thy oxen, I say also is again the bullock. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee there. Okay, and I will bless thee. Only five. And if thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt build it of uh Thou shalt, excuse me, thou shalt not build it, excuse me. Thou shalt not build it of, uh, of a hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tomb upon it, thou hast uh, polluted it. A hewn stone. A hewn stone. What is a hewn stone? A hewn stone simply means, uh, like all these blocks, is a stone hewn. Uh, that is, all these blocks, stones, that is already been carved, by me but i mean i want to say if you want to build this altar don't use that stone you must find a natural stone from the earth the one no had no, no man has ever touched the one no man has ever never ever manipulated 
He said, because if you lift up thy tool, you're going to pollute that stone. That altar will be defied. So now you must look for a uh, uh, unused stone. No man has ever thought that is the unused stone. No used stone. Used stone is, will be the one they already manipulated. Uh, by so doing, it's already been polluted. Okay? Now you must look for play natural stones. And that is what you are going to use to build me the altar. Okay, should I read 25 again? And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of your stone. For if thou lift up thy two upon it, thou hast polluted it. If you now begin to take the, the stones and begin to make it heal now, therefore it's already been polluted, I don't need it. Of any offering made there is not going to heaven. But rather you must do, build this altar with uh, unused stone. Again, we know according to a royal law idiom or uh, yes, we know terminology, we knew stone also go for humans. Yahushua is the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And we know serpent is also a stone. That is the stone in the hands of that man in Mark Marks chapter 5. That was using stones to cut his body. Because he said, I want to make myself like the most I will make myself like the most high. So is that unholy stones that is cutting a cussy people pay. Okay? But Yahushua is the chief cornerstone. And we also know the royal law also makes it so clear that we are the spiritual stone to build the spiritual house. I think Kifa said that. We are stones. He said, Kifa, you are a stone. So we are all stones. So this one is the singular. And it has to do with the altar. So if the bullock is a man, Ephesians 5 said this is how a husband needs to cleanse his wife to wash it and give himself for her. Therefore, if the bullock represents the patriarch Adam, so what did the altar go for? Because the bullock is to uh, the altar needs to uphold, you know, the bullock. Let's see put some more before we hit on it. So we see already the stone must be a hewn stone. Okay, that is natural. To make the altar. Here I am. Leviticus 21 verses 7. They shall not take a wife. He's talking about the prince. Aaron and his sons. If you read it from verses 1. You are going to find it over there. They shall not take a wife. That is a whore. That is a stone. She is a prostitute. A profane. Okay. Yeah. She's already been defied. Neither shall they take a woman. Put away from her husband. For he is. Holy unto Yehovah. He's speaking to Aaron. Should I take it? Okay, let me take from verse 4 for a better understanding. And Yehovah said unto Moshe, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron. Say unto them, they, uh, There shall not be the fight for the dead among his people. It, the list keeps going on. But um, after the stones, the all hewn stones, all the hewn stones. Okay. Uh -huh. Now I read verses uh, 11 now. Alright now, I read verses 13 now. And he shall take a wife in her virginity. This is the duty of the priest and his sons, the high priest. They don't take a defied woman. Okay, he shall take a woman in her virginity. That is unused to. And that is the very unused to. Abbe Yowa said, it must be used to build this altar for him. So we know stone is, a, is supposing. So stone, that unused stone is a woman. Okay? The altar, excuse me, is a woman. It's playing the part. It's representing a woman. While the bullock placed upon the altar is a man. Now the bullock is, is going to be sacrificed every day for a whole seven day. Represent the seven thousand years, you know, dealing with the wickedness. Serpent did with the first man and the first woman that bring this calamity today on earth, causing every one of us pain. Seven thousand years is going to be lasted. It will be lasted for a whole seven thousand years. The eight thousand years will begin, you know, the, 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 the eternal. The eight thousand simply stands for eternal. Flesh is being cut off. No more flesh, no more nothing absolute that polluted. Okay, that is where we are going to see Revelation 21. The new Yerushalayim, dressed as a, a wife, a bride, a dance for her husband. Okay? So, by now, we know already the altar is the woman. Because the bullock is always being placed upon the altar to, in, in order to cleanse the altar. And we also see, Abba Yehua said, 
uh, the angel uh, Havrel, Havrel said unto Maria, for the <coughs> only one to be you know, born, he said, the royal Hakodesh is going to come upon you. And husband always come upon his wife is on top. And the bullock is on top of the altar. That is the only way the altar will be cleansed. And this service is being done every blessed day. Should I take it again before we return back to Ephesians? And thou shalt offer every day bullock for a sin offering for atonement. And thou shalt cleanse the altar. When thou shalt make an altar, when thou shalt make an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it, every day shalt thou make an atonement for the altar, and sacrifice it, and sanctify it, and it shall be an whole, uh, it shall be an altar most only whosoever toucheth her, the uh, toucheth, uh, toucheth the altar shall be holy. Now we also unveil that. So be realistic to yourself. What sin? The, the stone did, or the wood did, or whatever, that he needs an atonement. Because I said this atonement is being done every blessed day. That is sex, idiom. Every blessed day, that is how he needs to be taken. Every blessed day, this is how you cleanse your wife. Okay, now I want to read, we are, we are back again to Ephesians. Okay, now Ephesians 25. This is how you make that sweet smelly savor. And to obey your wife, because this is how Yahushua did it. He died for his own wife. So we want to see how you also need to die for your wife. We see the bullock already. Rebo <laughs> Shantai, but this is heavy. All right, now I take from 26. That Okay, I take 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Yahushua also loved the congregation and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of the word, uh, with the washing of water, by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious congregation, and having no spot, uh, okay, not having spot or wrinkle or such thing, but that it should be holy, and without blame. This is how you need to do it. Now, how are you giving yourself now to your wife? Because you cannot go to the cross to die for her. But you have, there's one cross you have over here. This one is everyday cross, okay? This is the service. You have your own cross right on your bed. Hmm? What is the water you are going to be giving into cleanser? It is your spam. That is how you gave yourself to her. That is how you gave part of you to her. That is how you gave your life unto her. To cleanse in her. We see the cyst almost, follicle stimulating hormones. It will prepare, prepare your heart to do to work for her. And we also see the seventh, seventh almost interstitial stimulate, stimulated almost to cause the ejaculation. So these two uh, 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 angels that is bearing witnesses for says needs to always walk with you every day in order for this service not to be done. Woman is the altar. She needs to be cleansed. Dude, prior to what she did in Genesis 3, that is applicable to every woman. We are all under the causes of the first woman. And this cause is going to last for 7,000 until Yahushua comes. This cause is still kept. It's still right there. We still see blood because we are unclean. That makes us now unclean. That is why the bullock needs to be given every blessed day cleansing of her. She needs to be cleansed because every month our cleanliness is coming out of us. As a reminder of what passes through us. A thing may not to be done. That is the sexual perversion. We're going to see that in part 2. So that is why her husband needs to come into her and needs to be doing this holy service in cleansing her in order to be breaking the filthy wicked hands and serpent of her until the very consummation of it all, which is in the seventh. Sex activities needs to be done every day. Like the scientist said, it is once in two days. But the royal law said it is every day. Every day he needs to be giving in cleansing of her. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. You are doing something powerfully spiritual unto her by you. Why you are also enjoying it here physically on earth. And those two angels, they are the angels to empower you for sex activities. They are the one to, you know, to angel. They, they are the energy in you. That they are the energy. It's a powerful service. You see, as food is being taken physically every day, every now and then you do eat food. This is how it is spiritual food for marriage. This is how husband and wife needs to go to each other every blessed day. 
No day to be exempted at all. Mm -mm. It is your food. It is food for your marriage. It is the spiritual food that makes your marriage grow. Look, look at it in a simple. Look at this. Look at it in a very simple form. Any man that have this obligation in his own house, have an altar of sex every night. Tell yourself now, where quarrel is going to come? Where confusion is going to come? Confusion can't come from nowhere. Quarrel can't come from nowhere. Because it is being done every day. Because when something transpired in the morning, wherever, in the evening time, we are coming to our service. So tell me, why is that going to be, you know, throwing your head at me? No, that can't be done. Because we need to do this service. As soon as the man come into her, that hunger disappeared from both of them. That is the building of it. First Corinthians 7, 18 from 1 to 5. Now concerning the things, oh no, let me just read. Oh, okay, three. I'm still coming over here. Now, okay, three. Now, first Corinthians 7, 3. Let husband render unto his wife due balances. You must balance it. Spiritual and physical must be balanced. Okay. And likewise, also the wife unto her husband. The wife hath not power over our own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband had no power over his own body, but the wife defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your uh, self-control, whatever. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> the part I need, I just read already. Okay, now. Apostle Shao said, even if you are going to fasting, don't do it for a very don't do it for a long time. So that Sepe will not come and attack your sexual bed. Your sex bed, your sex altar needs to be given every now and then. The only way that is he said, don't defraud. Your husband, you must take it serious. The wife must take it serious. You shouldn't defraud one another. Don't look down upon that service. Not at all. It is spiritual. The only way you are not going to do it to my own best knowledge over there should be when woman is seeing blood. Because that is uncleanliness of her. Should be when she is seeing blood. Okay? Then immediately all that is out of the way, come quickly again so that Satan will not enter into it. Okay, maybe man, you want to fast. You also say you want to fast. But you say you shouldn't go away for a very long time. Then Satan is going to tempt, he's going to, he's, he's going to interfere, he's going to interrupt your sex bed. Whatever you are doing concerning this service is very vital, don't do it too long. In order for you to be giving yourself to one another every blessed day. Sexual activity, it is every blessed day for a couple. Okay? So that is how the altar is being cleansed. That is how you cleanse her. That's because your sperm, you are giving unto her. That is how you cleanse her from the inner. Many, I don't want to go into uh, what the what it contains, the vitamin or the fructose or spam contain for a woman. I don't want to go into that today because I already did some message titled, uh, what was it titled? Oh, my father. Okay, uh, several steps to, to approach the throne of Abba Yehovah versus Satanic Trinity. Yeah, you're going to find it over there. I talked about it. Over 200 fructose spam is given to the woman when she drinks it. Okay, so right now the one you pass into our vagina is going to be clean CR. Ah, it's going. They say it makes young, of course. They say uh, spa, it makes woman young. It makes her happy. It, it reduces. Uh, 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 that is, there is a disease is stopping not to come at all. Reduce some, you know, disease. It makes healthier. It makes her young. It makes her happy. Contain contain over two hundred protein for her. You see, so this is how you clean CR. Ah. So they say you will be removing wrinkle, blemish, sickness is blemished. But as you are giving it to her every day, this is how you cleanse the earth. It is spiritual. This sex is the most holiest thing as uh, I have ever knew. Okay? Now back to whosoever that touches the altar will become holy. <laughs> back to that now. I think that is the last point over here. Titus chapter 2, 3 to 5. Listen now, woman is the altar. We unveil already. The age woman, likewise, that they be in a that that they be in behavior as 
uh, becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving to... No, I'm not, I'm not going to read that because there is no alcoholism here. Mm -mm. Teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep her at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh not be blasphemed. So, any woman, because woman needs to teach woman, any woman this author taught or teaches or bring into the reality, uh, reality of this very service, she will be holy. She's going to love her husband. She's going to handle the affair of her children. She's going to love her husband. She's going to be submissive unto her husband. She's going to be discreet. In fact, the virgin is going to be chased, you know, and touched. That it would be huge stone, uh, excuse me, all huge stones. Until their husband coming. It's if you don't do this, therefore you are a black swimmer. You see, when any high priest does any nonsense, any filthy service in the altar of Abayah, what they get killed. Serpent did a worthy service, you know, by touching the Ark of the Covenant of Adam, he got killed. We see Uzzah, when he also did, he got killed. You don't do any house service because it is holy. It's so unfortunate that a lot of perversion is going on in this, you know, holiest service of Abba Yehuwa. It saddens my heart. You see now what Sempet is using women to do. You see how filthy women becomes now. You see how Sempet is using women to destroy the men. That is how they blasphemed. They blasphemed the word of Abbe Yehuah. Sempet is teaching women unholiness. Sempet is using women to destroy the whole world. Just as he used the first woman to destroy everyone. What we are seeing in our mother in, in the law is the same in this day. Sempet is using women much much in wicked area to destroy the man the holiness won't be stand in the presence of Abba Yehovah. yes it's using women powerfully this they bring it forth children of serpents here on earth you know women they are married to serpents now we we'll also see that in part two so we see already the altar is a woman mm? the stone is a woman okay we see how she uphold her husband. What is the what is the office of a woman before the man? She is a helper. She needs to help her husband in order for everyone to be cleansed, in order for this calamity to be removed from every one of us. So this is how the altar uphold the bullock, in order for the altar to be cleansed. Let's take one picture before we not proceed now to point two. Here I am, Luke chapter seven thirty six to thirty eight. The altar as a woman, a helper. Altar is a helper to uphold the bullock. Okay. Luke 7, 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, because the bridegroom is about to cleanse her. When she knew that Yehoshua sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought another bastard uh, boss of an ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to uh, wash, wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. So, you know, this place, this very woman is playing here, Maria Magdala, it is the office of the high priest. Now each time, uh, the day of our torment, you know, the high priest needs to lay his hand upon the bullock. We see already Aaron needs to lay his hand in order for the altar to be cleansed. So that is the job of the high priest. So this woman did the job of the high priest because someone needs to take that office. As a helper, she did it for her husband. Maria Magdala is the wife of Yahushua HaMashiach. So you can remind few 26, now 1 to 12. I think I'm going to start from 6. And uh, w now, when Yahushua was in Bethany, in the house of Simeon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster bus of very expensive, uh, of very uh, precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat, as, as he sat at meat. He anointed Okay, I keep reading it. When his disciple, and I'm not going to read that at all. Uh, 
Okay. I read 13 now. Verily I say unto you. Okay, I read 11 now. For ye have poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Okay, wherever the gospel will be preached, okay. Another powerful woman of Yehovah. They are one, eh? I unveiled that already. Because Abba Yehovah also gave that ability to Maria, Magdal, uh, Maria uh, to also separate herself in different beings. The spirit is right in heaven. Like I said, if Maria is the wife of Abba Yehovah, why Joseph also deal with our body? I unveiled already in the mystery of sin. Okay. What part Maria, uh, Joseph deal with was our flesh and our soul. Our flesh and soul, or our flesh, yeah, our flesh, excuse me, our flesh, yes. I bet you want to walk with flesh. Mm -mm. That was the part Joseph dealt with in bringing forth the Holy Child. As I bet you want to walk with our spirit. So the other Maria Magdala, she is the same person, but walking just like I bet you want to separate himself into the uh, three dimensions. This same he did for his wife. His wife, he said, two shall become one. His wife is also having that same ability. She's playing a part of redemption. She's also playing a part revealing our filthiness. The first Adam, a coward, did right in Genesis 3. That was this, the a filthiness. A filthy part. Our flesh, with our body, is playing the part of our, our, our soul. With our body, is walking the holy part of it. That is the part Joseph deal with. It is a, Apostle Charles said, this is a great mystery. And a filthy part, that would be now our soul and our flesh. Is playing the part of wickedness, of horish woman we are, that we are. Of horish woman, hardened, that we have become, became, right in Genesis 3. A married woman having sex with another man, that is horish. So that is the part, of, she is more pussy, playing the two parts. That is a great mystery. Abba Yehovah is powerful. He separated himself into the three different beings. He, he also gave that glory to his wife. And all this is spiritual. Not right now. You see, you anoint his body. Who is his body? His bride. Yahushua is the head of the congregation. The congregation is the body. Okay? His bride. She anointed the bride of Yahushua for everything to go well now in our kingdom. Okay? So she played the part of a high priest as a helper. You see, she was weeping. Why was she crying? Yes, because some pet is about to bite her feet. She was crying and said, this is what I did in Genesis 3. That brings about your biting out of the, the feet. That is going to also bring about, you know, the thorns on your head. I'm the one that did it. That is what she was crying for. She needs to perfume that leg because the service is a sweet, smelly, a savor, service unto Abba Yehovah. So this is how she anointed the ministries. This is how she makes it so wonderful. Because the man is about to be suffered, the husband is about to suffer, the helper, which is the author, she's playing a part to help the very bullock, the eternal Adam, the eternal patriarch, the eternal Adam, second Adam, playing the part of redemption for every one of us. Because he said that is how he gave himself as a sacrifice unto Yehovah for a sweet, smelly savor. This is how he did it. So this is how husband is also doing it for his own wife. Every day you need to be giving yourself to her in order to cleanse her. Okay. So that is the structure. This is the f first alphabet of this work called sex. What did they go for? Spiritual, sacred, sweet, smelly, savor service. And to Abba Yehovah. It is sacred. Okay. It is holy. It is awesome. All right, family. You see how tough this one also is? We are done with the very first alphabet. So now we are proceeding to the second and the last alphabet. Meanwhile, I'm going to put that one in part two. Yes, that one is going to be part two now because it can't go. I still have two to unveil. I only have 20 minutes left over. It can't even fit the first alphabet, the second one. I don't, I don't think so. So I'm going to drop this over here and continue with part two. So formally, try and follow up with a part two. There's the part one, so we go for the part two. Yeah, in order for me to also be able to establish that one also, because that one is also fully loaded, but not as this at all. Mm. Oh, sex never meant for iniquity, never meant the way you use it.
you It's gonna make it all new again It's gonna make it all new again Sex is so holy Sex is a holy service Sex is a sacred service Sex is a spiritual service Never meant to use Never meant to use the way you use it Ah, uh, you say 